So hi everybody and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 5 tutorial series for absolute beginners. This is video 95 and in this video we continue with our project tile. And the thing what we are going to do is when I start here my game I grab the weapon and I shot to this uh, boxes. They are not flying around and the reason for that is our project tile is not causing physics impulse and we will do this one and of course we are using this original projectile as our layout we read creating this here so we and i will explain just this code how they did this and what is important and what is not important okay let's get started first of all let's open up our created projectile which is this one it's similar to the other one the only difference is we have nothing in our event graph. All right, that's cool. So, but before we go on, uh, I want to show you something special here. Uh, it's, it is special in a way because it's not really expected. And what is that? It is this event hit node. Why is this a special? Normally, what, when you see something like event hit or something like that, you would uh, guess you have just to go here to this component scroll down and it is one of this one on component hit or some uh, something like that or it is the sphere on component hit because hit and hit sound similar but in this case this has not uh, nothing to do with this on component hit it is a special node it is event hit so when it hits then you can call this node just as a reminder so not that you try to search this one because in general you go all time to this collision this is so the normal workflow and then you would try to find where is this on component hit in this case no all right let's continue let's build so we need this event hit let's create it okay i create in my uh, uh, event graph event hit and here you can see event hit under collision as well but it is a separate node so and now we have here options what we want to do is uh, first of all identify uh, who we, uh, who we, uh, um, to what we hit or something like that right like here we have here actually they are not identifying that because that was on uh, component hit let me show you this difference again that's interesting as well. Let's point this out here. When I have here this on component hit, just as when we stay here, here we need to identify our component and the other actor. And that's interesting because I made the mistake and thought we have to identify here it as well. But that's not true. Here we can see we just need... Um, we have here other components and my components and so on, but we don't have to identify um, with uh, what we collide. That's a very big uh, advantage. And yeah, that's very nice too, because we don't need a cast and that is all time nice. So let's continue. What we do now is, or what they do now is, <laughs> um, they get to the other component because they want to check if this projectile is hitting with a component um, that's also very important that you check this if it's a component or uh, if it's an actor or something like that later because if it's not a component it will react a little bit slightly different but in our case it is a component because we will hit on this static box here and this one will be a component let's see so, and what they do is then is simulating physics. So if the static box here, which I have selected, has not is simulated physics on, then it will not work because that's right here. I go here to details. I type in simulated physics and you can see simulated physics is ticked, which means when we shot our impulse can, uh, can, uh, hit this one and this box will fly with the simulated physics behind the scene all right with that said we go back so we have understood this as well and this is just a check to make it sure so this code here is simulated physics with a branch is just checking if this is true and if not 
it will do nothing if it's true it will add this code here this impulse let's do this one so from other component i search is simulating physics and you can see here other options as well but yeah you can read it and then we just check this this is just a checker if it's on or not on the other component that's all the code about this one and if it is we do something if it's not we do nothing that's the oops that's the thing what we are going to do and then here this note is very important uh, important it says we add impulse at location Imp there are many different kind of impulses actually and add impulse uh, and you can see there are impulses 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 and radial impulse or whatever impulse at impulse at location and we want to choose here something we have here a sphere or a static mesh what is that i think that's not the right thing but i just click it because it has something to do with at impulse at location and yes the other actor actually so normally i would go out from here and then write at impulse uh at location so that was not the right way to do it but if you just find the node it's okay but make it this way and you have see here other options from the other component at impulse and here you see you can direct at impulse at impulse at location at radial impulse and these are the normal options normally and yeah we choose now here at impulse at location let's take it from here the other one would work too but this one is the uh, let's say the normal way how you call it and then we have set this up node right when you get all timer node you have to set some settings here and then you continue so what we need here to set up is this impulse here this location perhaps too so let's watch it so the location they get the actor location and then this impulse let's start with the location because it's easy the location it's very easy because they said this projectile is flying anyway to the component so i just get this projectile component uh, location then i know where the other uh, um, component is because the project tile is hitting the other component so they made just a self-reference that's very easy solved that's very nice um no let's make this way so i click right click here then i write just self uh, so and here we have this note uh, get reference to self and then we oops that's not uh, the way we i can get here a location but this is not a little bit they made it faster get actual location okay they found a better solution than me i made a self and then i would say here get actor location and you see this one is not needed because the self you can click this away and here it's already self uh, option in it and what they did is just directly get actor location they just search directly this node and then this is the same uh, and put it in because they know the self is included here i made it a little bit more work around <laughs> but it's the same all right with that said we are almost finished we need just this impulse here and impulse means how strong you want to make this impulse force so if it's too low it will not work if it's too high it will throw the boxes away which means in the end you have to test out these values a little bit and that's why we show what they did so they said get velocity and then they multiply this velocity with 100 and then they add uh, this one to this impulse here interesting is this color normally this velocity color is the uh, yellow is normally a vector colors and vector is okay but um yeah vector is all time used for different kind of things but 
Yellow is all time location normally, but anyway, let's continue. First, get velocity. You can get this velocity here. Get the velocity like normal. Yes, this is the node, but interesting is to understand where this velocity comes from, right? Because I show you the work around again. Normally, what you do is get this projectile, and then from this projectile, you get velocity because we are getting actually this velocity. This velocity here is actually actually this one. And here, then uh, the next step, what they did is just multiply this one by 100. Okay, then uh, multiply, uh, right, multiply here, and then we have this operator multiply. Okay, not this one. This is vector multiplication. Uh, we need probably... Uh, here float multiplication okay then right here float and that turns also wrong multiply and let's see if i find a float multiplication let's see what they found here what is this node <laughs> uh, scales vector and beta uh okay normally it's a multiply Mul let's see multiply so this one i need the problem is uh, how i get this float in it right and when i right click on it perhaps i can change this convert pin on the bottom there is this convert pin and now you can change this to another value and interesting is that they offered this lot beforehand that we have to go here and then convert this pin in and here we can choose now this float you see now i have this float and now i can set here the value 100 like they did and i connect this to my impulse and now this one is actually the solution for this one act uh, so but they did just the same thing just with this one it's shorter let's use first their solution and then let's compare if this one is the same so they just get this get velocity node because they know this one this node is the same as this one and then they multiplied this one with 100 and then they added this impulse i showed you only where they get this node actually and why is this important to know where they get this velocity because you will you won't calculate this value right this impulse cal value but when you don't know where this velocity comes from you can't come calculate it and here let me compile the save and now we know where it comes from it comes from projectile movement let me click it on it then it goes here to details it goes to velocity here anywhere anywhere so we write here velocity hello city and if you write the velocity then you find this uh, option velocity here and we set this to 3000 right and this get velocity actor here this node is actually getting this value 3000 then it is multiplying this one with 100 so we have an impulse of 300,000 here actually at um at the x uh, value so a force x is 300,000, all other are zero, zero. And yeah, that's it what they are doing. We will, we will compare it if it's working later with this version, just to understand it, that it's indeed this one. But now we continue. So compile, save, and here they do also destroy the actor. Why they destroy the actor? Because this projectile is hitting the component and then they want that this projectile is destroyed and we see just the boxes okay destroy actor that makes also sense now we have this one but one more thing uh when you go to your projectile here this were not this this is the original one to our ones so here you can set also uh let's say you can destroy this projectile in different ways one way is in the event graph of course destroy actor like they did after the code what you have done then 
they destroy the actor but there is also this set life span here you can destroy the actor after let's say you set here a lifespan so let's say after five seconds but this lifespan is also included in this uh, projectile here movement component anywhere so they have included this one this option here also in this one so i won't show you this as well but this one but it is very important to know this uh set lifespan here because i think uh lifespan i think not all not all um components have this included here in this one this one that's why it's important to know this will know as well with that set you can go here and write here life for example life and then when you write live actor and there is an initial lifespan and you can set this one as well uh, how long this actor should live after it is activated activated means when we shot this is spawned then three seconds later it is automatically destroyed so that's set and in this case they destroy it not after three seconds in this case they want to destroy this sphere when it's hit but careful when you make a shot that takes longer than three seconds to hit anything then you have to change this uh, lifespan here so it lives a little, a little bit longer or the shot will be destroyed before it is hitting anything so that's uh, that you have to keep in mind with that set we can test this now and important was these boxes have uh, simulated physics on and that's why these boxes are flying around and let's say this box this wall is actually just a static mesh actor too but it has not physics simulated on and that's why it's not flying around so let's test it i grab this i shot and you see i shot the wall it is nothing it is just blocking but let's see if i can simulate the physics here on the wall as well and if it's flying around i click the wall i go here to the details panel i click right here simulate and you see the physics is not active now i activate it i i start the game and now i let the wall fly around too not really it is just as absorbing and there is another setting okay let's skip this there it will work when we set it up probably uh, but for our purpose uh we keep this because this boxes let uh, we can set up this boxes in a special way perhaps we have set this a little bit more up and then it will work so but with that said ah one more test i said this one is the same like this one right so let me show you that this one is indeed the same as this one i connect this one here compile and because this is the original place and you see we have the same thing like before all right with that said we are finished actually with our projectiles and in the next video we can now migrate all that what we created in this level to our other project rpg level that's interesting because now we created here a spawner and this uh, weapon and the and this project tiles but in the other project i don't want to recreate all this kind of stuff again so i will use this migrate option and i will just adjust this things there so i don't have to rework all things again and that i show in the next video and with that said if you have any questions or any complaints write it in the comments and see you in the next video bye